very excellent perspective um, on this field. Thank you very much. Uh, it, this, I'm, I've been looking forward to this talk. Um, so um, let me just talk a bit about my perspective. Um, at the Laboratory for Advanced Computing, uh, working with Young Hung Gu and others, we build open source infrastructure for big data. We've been doing it for 20 years, but until uh, recently when Google said it was okay to work with big data, there weren't that many people interested in big data. But I think this is really a pretty interesting time in science to do big data, and I'm really, really happy to be here. Um, at the Institute for Sy uh, Systems Biology and Genomics, um, we work with big data in biology, and um, we, use the we use open source systems to do big data in biology. And at Open Data Group, where I also work, we um, uh, use open source systems to do um, big data projects in, um, in finance and um, online. Um, I'm going to, in, in, in big data, it really helps if you have a platform to do experiments on. And so I work with a, sort of a not-for-profit consortium called the uh, Open Cloud Consortium. And the uh, infrastructure, we have a, a series of test beds. I'm going to tell you just uh, um, a, a sentence or two about two of them. The first one is the Open Cloud test bed. It's been running about four years. It has racks in, uh, in Chicago at Starlight at UIC at John Hopkins, where Alex Elze um, gave one of the uh, keynotes, and a Cal IT2. Um, all the racks are connected by 10 gigabits per second um, networks. And um, we run um, the software, I'm going to talk a little bit about sector wide area across there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about distributed uh, big data science. And it, a lot of it uses this test bed, which is a test bed for playing around with different ways, uh, different open source software stacks and um, proprietary software stacks for big data. Um, we're, we're um, in the next month or two, we expect to officially announce uh, something we've been doing informally for a couple of years called the Open Science Data Cloud. Uh, this is um, a, a, um, a, a cloud for uh, uh, data sets that you want to keep around for a long time. So it's, it's, it's going to be run a little bit like a library. We're going to um, select data sets to, to, keep, to put in here. But once it's in there, once the data set's in there, we're going to keep, try to keep it around for um, you know, 20, 30, or more years. And so we have some astronomy data to kick this off from, um, so, uh, from uh, Johns Hopkins working with um, Alex Alze. Um, I, uh, we have uh, um, some biological data um, from um, uh, University of Chicago and UIC um, in a project called BioNimbus. And um, it, with some exceptions, we're going to try to take any, bio, any genomic data anywhere in the world eventually and put it into this cloud. And um, we're um, doing partnerships with five international partners. Um, and that's a, sort of a, the new infrastructure we're going to set up. And um, sort of the one way to think of um, what I think a little bit about when I do big data is if you have small data, um, you know, everyone here has a laptop. Most people are looking at their laptops um, and reading the news. Um, um, but if you have a laptop and a little bit of data, you could do whatever you want. Um, if you um, have a large collaboration um, with um, you know, um, dedicated support for five or 10 years, then as a matter of pride, you always build your own infrastructure. And um, hopefully, that infrastructure is up before the, uh, whatever you're supposed to do is um, the deadline approaches. And I'm sort of focusing in the middle um, where you still have medium to large data, but you want a general infrastructure so that you can sort of manage that effectively. Um, and so the Open Science Data Cloud, and a lot of what I'm going to talk about, is in this middle. Um, we can't do everything you could do with a laptop. Um, we could do more, typically, than you can do with these very, very dedicated infrastructures. Um, and um, that's my perspective. So um, I don't think of big data. Um, there's a term emerging um, sort of uh, which, I, which I tend to like a little better, called um, data center scale or warehouse scale computing. And um, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. This, this or I'm going to talk a, for the first few slides. I'm thinking um, um, before we dive into details, um, I'm going to ask sort of if I take a 10-year perspective or a 15-year perspective, what's different today about how we do big data? 
So um, I, data scale, um, center scale computing, sort of, I'm not going to try to give a formal definition, but it provides storage and computing, computation resources at the scale of and with the reliability of a data center. So um, these are pictures of real data centers. Some are ugly, some aren't. Uh, this is one of the funkier looking data centers. It's a small boutique data center. Um, and so um, when you um, try to have, if you fill up a data center with data and then try to do inferencing and analysis on that, that's sort of, that's what I'm interested in, data or warehouse scale computing. Um, there's a really nice book about this that was just published and, um, in 2009, and it's available for free over the internet. And it's a no-nonsense uh, book by people who work at Google about how um, to design a, a warehouse scale or data, scale, data center scale computer called the data center as a computer. I think not, I've been using that title in some of my keynotes for the last two or three years, and um, it's obviously uh, um, other, uh, lots of other people have come up with it, but it's sort of, you know, sometimes um, if you think of what your other computer is, if your other computer is a data center, you know, what does that mean? So um, I, I, there's um, a lot of things about data scale, data center scale computing that's not new. Um, most of it is just what we've been doing for a couple decades, but I'm going to isolate three things that I think are new. Um, so I think the first is the scale. So um, in scientific computing, we have been by and large focused on HPC. And um, how many people have seen a uh, high performance computer? Okay. And you know, um, so th picture that in your mind. And how many people have seen a warehouse? Um, raise your hand. Okay. You s you've been in a warehouse. Okay. So that. The, a warehouse is quite different than an HPC device. Um, so I think the first thing that was new is in science, we were using MPI and we're trying to reduce latency and we're doing everything we could. Um, we would buy a new supercomputer for 10 to $20 million every few years. We would spend all our time trying to get the most out of that piece of big iron um, by doing very specialized programming, taking months to do that. and. Um, um, that's sort of how um, HPC and science was, uh, how, big, how sort of um, HPC and science was progressing. At the same time, um, companies like Google and Yahoo and Microsoft and Facebook um, found themselves amassed with data that were by, was by and large, the requirements to analyze that data um, were quite different than the requirements we had when we bought a $20 million supercomputer to do MPI programming to sort of do very sort of things that required we reduce latency. And so um, they, um, uh, Google, for example, um, created this, uh, I know you've heard about it, uh, the, the sort of what I think of as the Google data stack, but it, it allowed you to scale storage and compute resources to the level of a warehouse. And this is just fundamentally different. The scale was fundamentally different, and how they did that was fundamentally different than what we've been doing in science. And now we've sort of come back, and we're trying to take those techniques and apply them within science. So the first thing that's different is the scale. So um, a, a data center costs two to four hundred million dollars for a you know standard size data center, um, um, and you know um, some of these companies were building two, three, four, five of these a year it dwarfed the kinds of things we're doing in HPC. The other thing that's new, it was really a different pricing model, a different usage model, a different provisioning model. You could sort of go to a web page, and sort of this is what Amazon did. You could go to a web page. If you bought a book, you could go to a web page. Um, you could sort of um, um, sign up for a service fairly easily called you know, the Amazon um, Elastic Compute Cloud and you could bring up 10 compute instances, and you could do that in the middle of the night. Um, you could do a computation on 10 compute instances, and then you can go back to sleep um, the next day, uh, th that morning, and still get an hour or two of, sli uh, an hour or two of sleep before you went to work. Um, if you try to, um, in your day job, buy 10 computers, set them up, provision them, um, run software on them, do a computation, that certainly took more than a, an hour, a few minutes at night. And so the ability to sort of elastically pay for what you need for a couple hours at a time, set it up on demand anywhere in the world over a web interface, that, that kind of thing 
it is absolutely changes the way you do things. And I, um, um, I, on the weekends, I'm supposed to I have I'm supposed to have fun on Saturdays, um, but every once in a while I have a deadline, um, and so well, I'll get up at four in the morning and work for an hour or two before people get up. And um, one of the things I I had a computation that was taking was going to take all weekend. And I knew that that was going to get in the way of what I had to do. So um, I was on one of these elastic clouds. I just uh, tripled the amount of memory. And it went from being disbound um, to being in memory. Um, tripling the amount of memory on that infrastructure took five minutes. The computation um, finished in 20 minutes. Um, I took a run out. And I was still ready before um, anyone got up in the family. And you know, if I had to actually go um, buy the memory, put the memory in, um, um, do all that, I certainly couldn't have done it in five minutes. So the ability to get infrastructure on demand um, is just very, very powerful. And um, I think we're going to see over the next couple of years what kind of infrastructure we get changing radically. Right now, we could get a VM, but I can't get a virtual network. I can't get a virtual data center. So one of the things we're trying to do is um, I care these days about biologists. So um, is anyone here a biologist? OK. So my goal um, is to, for any time there's a biologist anywhere in the world to give them a virtual genomic center on demand anytime they want so that they can compete at scale um, with others. And so the, we're, this v idea of virtualization um, and giving infrastructure um, that way is just a very new and doing it on demand. And then uh, the other thing that's new, I think, is the simplicity. Um, when you're hired by um, internet companies in in the Bay Area um, who work with big data, you're expected to be productive in, a, in, in two or three days. You're expected to be able to do a computation on 100 terabytes of data using Hadoop or something like that. Um, in science, we had a different model. We would train you for a year to learn all the things you had to learn about MPI and parallel programming. Um, we would then, after a year, you would take, after you had been trained, you would um, um, work on a problem and um, you know write some papers and get some really fancy code out and demo to supercomputing but it was sort of a one to two year process not a one to two day process and um, you know you can't um, be as powerful in one to two days and you know but you can get something done and I think this trade-off of trying to take very uh, narrowing expectations um, narrow and producing specialized programming frameworks that allow you to get something done in a few days versus having very general infrastructure that's much more powerful, much more general, but requires much more time um, um, is, is something we're going to see. And you know, some, maybe you can do MPI from start in, you know, in 30 or 45 days, but it's much more complicated than some of the frame, frameworks that are, that are out there. So you know, my, my view is the scale is new. Um, the elastic usage-based pricing is new. Um, the simplicity is new. But pretty much everything else is old. And just if people say it's new, you know, you should sort of talk to them carefully and find out what they're talking about. Um, 